Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Do it live. Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Welcome to a Wired Access podcast production brought to you by Herd at Sports. I'm your host, DJ K-Dub Omaha, and to my left, I have my co-host, but he's also a businessman. He's also a coach. He's also a father and a person that can train your son or daughter when it comes to baseball, softball. Brian Southworth, welcome to the show. Today, we're kind of setting up a little different here. It's just me and him. Normally, we have someone we're talking to. Um, The weather kind of adjusts things, but also, we have a big show next week. And I don't know about you, but the last live show you and I did it was pretty cool, dude. Just the energy, you know, and and uh, the story. Obviously, the young kids that were there to watch this athlete, Jordy Ball, who they look up to and they admire to see her do what she does, and but for her to tell the true story and not the limelight story, and and how important her family was, and how all that leads to who she is. And obviously, we're going to get into yourself as well, because you've done some traveling, you've done some learning, which sometimes people are afraid of. They're like, they want to go. Sometimes they use it as a social hour. And other times they go, like for me, when I used to do it, I would always go to try to get one big clip that I can bring back. If I got one, no matter if it was 10, 12 hours, I felt successful, you know, because it is how much can you take from someone? But we do have next week our live show with Lindsey Krause from Nebraska Cornhuskers Volleyball. That's going to be at the Herd at Sports Bar there in La Vista. Make sure to stop out if you don't have your tickets already. Hopefully you can hit the link that we'll have on here um, because those tickets are almost sold out. We want to keep it to a reasonable amount of people. Um and we want to make it enjoyable where it's not super packed, but there's enough people to get the energy going, but also to get these kids, because I invited a couple teams, uh, to come see what it takes to be Lindsay. And obviously, we have a special co-host for that one, Coach Saunders. Um, I've had her on a, a couple shows before when I did radio and and nine years of championships. I mean, you, you can't you can't create that. I mean the You know, Bill Belichick is now leaving the Patriots, and that's like the – or Nick Saban's leaving Alabama. Those are like the names you can relate when it comes to multiple year-after-year champions, but we have it here in Omaha, Yep, and it's amazing. But also, this month, the Supernovas are coming, and if you're not joining the volleyball movement in Nebraska, Nebraska Volleyball Day, that was exciting. It was a lot of energy, 90,000 to watch two games. And what happened after that? Every college took took notes, right? They took a little bit. And every time I watched ESPN, if I would click it on, what would it say? The most watching a girl's sport, the most watching basketball, the most watching volleyball. And you're like, it all started with 90K. And Herd at Sports brought you that. If you use some of that, if you didn't see those videos, man, you really need to lock onto their link. But join the movement. It's sweeping across the country uh, and see some Major League Volleyball team. We have one here in Omaha, if you don't know, Omaha Supernovas. It's pro time, Nebraska. Just remember, hit the court. Go check it out. The first ever Pro Volleyball Federation match is actually going to be January 24th against Atlanta Vibe at the CHI Center. First serve starts at 7 p.m., so I don't know about you, but that's just exciting to see these athletes get that opportunity. We had on our show when we first started, thanks to you starting it back at your uh, your facility, we had some of the um, athletes united for softball. Mm-hmm. And we got to tell their story and understand that all they're wanting to do is play at the next level. One more time, right? You want to lace them up one more time. Well, this is this is easy. And if you're a big fan of volleyball, this is easy for you to go ahead and check out either just a single match or even the season. Go get a ticket at supernovas.com. That simple supernovas.com. Um, and just witness some of the talent. We have some local talent that's on the team. Former Gina Huskers, right? Yeah. I mean, you're getting former Huskers, but you're also getting athletes from across the United States that want to come here. They want to be a part of it. Just know that their first match is against the Atlanta vibe. So, I mean, what's going to happen when those athletes come up here to cold Omaha? I mean, yeah, they're indoors, but you still have to come inside and you still have to get the atmosphere 
I mean, I don't know about you. a little drier. Right? Yes, like, yes. You're just not the normal. So, But just remember that the Supernovas have different um, NCAA national champions, All-Americans, all the way to Olympians. And so when you think of that's some people's goal, right? The Olympics, and now they get to come back and play again. So go check out the Omaha Supernovas, and, and we appreciate them allowing us to talk about them and hopefully we can maybe get Gina on one time. I would like to, or any of them that would like to come talk, Brian, lots going on for you. Lately, you did a travel for a camp. Oh, what, yeah. what, where was that at? And what was that like? Oh, well, it was a busy December. Um, spent, uh, what, four, four or five days in, uh, Louisville at Ooh. the, uh, NFCA. So that was the, the softball coaches convention. That was my first time. Um, that was pretty cool. I mean, you could see, you know, just talking the investment in, in women's athletics is just unreal. I mean, it was the most attended convention in their history. Um, they're growing, they're doubling. Their you said every- females, right? Yeah. Women softball, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, cool. dude. So, um, that was cool. That was growing. Um, you know, just a, a lot of good people around that game and, um, a lot of people just willing to share, you know, information. I think that's important. Um, cause a lot of times like you see a successful coach and they have that recipe that works and they don't want to share that recipe, right? It's my recipe. Uh, <laughs> no one else touches it. I'm so, the one that, and the bad part is, is, you know, they picked in pieces from different ones to create it. Hey, at the end of the day, everyone stole everything. <laughs> oh, you tell like, me they I mean, just all over the news with Michigan and all that. Every yeah. coach steals one way or another. Yeah. I mean, we steal everything we know. Like, I mean, there's, there's very like, you know, we, and it's not a bad thing, you no, know, not I mean, me. it's like, you know, this coach was successful, like, you know, for a very long time, you don't need to recreate the, 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 the wheel process. Right. <laughs> so, um, no, that was great. That was a, a totally experience. I mean, it was much different from the baseball. I like, you know, I mean, they took such good care of me. It's like you had breakfast every morning, happy hours every afternoon. So just as far as like a social and, and integrating, they made you, know, you want to stay. Cause I, I, I know some of those and, and I did football was my biggest thing. You'd go to them. They're good, but like in between or stuff like that, you're looked. You're like, man, should I go for a couple hours and then come back and try to catch an eight o'clock? Instead, for you, you're looking and going, all right. So they got a happy snack hour, and I can talk to someone I don't know and actually pick their brain. Obviously, talk about softball for you. We've had some of the athletes that have came through that have not only taken what you've given, but helped you develop even further what you've given them with Jordy Ball, Ruby Malin, and many more. I mean, they're they're still coming up. How important was this to you and the growth of your company to to gain the softball knowledge? Yeah, I mean, it's the first time we've been to that, that I felt like we owed it to our softball girls to, you know, continue to get better, continue to learn. And, you know, when I look at my business, that's like one of the things I talk to my my trainers about. Like, you know, there's there's many different ways you like things you can compete on, right? Like price, knowledge, you know, experience, right? And and I was like building my business my goal was always to let's compete on knowledge like let's be the smartest person out there let's you know train with a scalpel rather than a saw like let's get down to exactly what these girls need to be doing these guys need to be doing um and just be more efficient with that so the the education we do i mean i think gosh I, it's embarrassing to say how much money i've spent on certifications i think i'm over like 20 now and in <laughs> different things but that's always been the goal yeah, you know, is, is to try to be one of the, the smartest, you know, around with a lot of that information and apply that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, and I think we owed it to the girls to to bring something back, to bring that back to Omaha and continue to help them. Well, and what I like is obviously you started the platform for me to help create and give these knowledge points, these gems. I mean, we've had episode after episode that if you're a parent or you're an athlete and you're not gaining something, I mean, I have parents that constantly will send me a message like this one goes for the last one raheem brisdeen who didn't play in high school and she goes i just feel so terrible for him but his resilience made me want to do better myself and when you can get a parent to want to do better off of a kid that's 18 19 20 just given their story that's what it's about of giving that knowledge of it's okay to fail but know that you could still make something of it. Now, obviously, when you look at your softball realms, what do you think was the biggest thing that you took away from the camp and able to provide? And what was something that you're like, okay, I see this, but now I can improve it and make that even better because it's it matches something similar to what we do. Yeah, you know, when I look at softball, I look at, I'm going to tie it back to like 
golf, baseball, maybe like some Formula One, right? So like, you know, the, the if I look at golf, they're like the pinnacle there. I mean, they do the most research, spend the most money. You know, they got owners that are, are making money selling golf clubs and, and, you know, doing that. So I look at baseball and baseball is about 10 years uh, like behind in golf. When it comes to technology, I right? got like you. Yeah, the yeah, track yeah, man yeah. That we're doing in baseball, that was in golf. Yeah, right? I mean, then, you go to Top Golf and you got the tracker and it watches your ball go out there. So I, yeah. I get that. So you know, then we look at softball, and I would say it's follow the same suit. We're about ten years behind. Ten years behind in softball. Now, I think it's catching up a lot faster. You know, because of the you know the the hype around like women's athletics and everything, but just a little bit behind and compared to the research and money that's been invested, but. Man, that's that's quickly changing. There is a lot of companies investing a lot of time and, and resources and providing these girls different products or different things and and education. So, how many coaches did you go did go with you? Did anybody go with you? Um, at, or is it something where it's your first time? You kind of want to get your feet wet, see what it is to offer because you never know. You could you can invest in other people and go, hey, let's go with a big risk, or you can go, we have stuff that's working. Let me go check it out, and then next time we're going to hit it bigger. So the softball one was just me, um, and then uh, we've never been to that one. We always – I take my staff to the the baseball one, which we just got back from. I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll talk about <laughs> too. But, uh, yeah, it's just me, and, and that's like, oh, it's tough. It's like, man, like I know no one. Um, you know, like I, you know, it's just uncomfortable going out there, and like you got to make a whole – whole new group of connections and learn and, and do that. So, I mean, it's a great experience. Well, hopefully the show that you have helped put on here with wired access has helped you kind of grow in that being able to get out of your comfort zone Absolutely. to make those conversations. And when you look at, you had a few camps, like you, R- Ruby did a softball camp. How did all those go? And, and, and do you feel like the athletes are really enjoying this coming back, being able to provide some of their information to these young athletes? Yeah, I, you know, I love the whole like NIL thing and, and the ability for these people to, you know, go make money off, you know, their name. And and these camps are great. I think, you know, I mean, it depends how you look at these camps. I tell people, you know, if like you're looking to go to these camps and take away a bunch like, hey, I need to do X, Y, Z different, like in, you know, my pitching mechanics and all that. And probably not the reason you go to those camps, but if you want to go you know, be around a great person, you know, like Jordy did a camp, Ruby did a camp. If you want to go around, be, be around a great person who has a process that succeeded at the highest level. Like, you know, I want my kids around more people like that. So I think it's great that, that they come back, they give back, they talk to these girls. Um, I helped with the Ruby camp. So we did the camp. We did, you know, Taught them a bunch of things, pizza, a bunch of things. And then we had a little hangout, right? We just sat around after and, and had pizza and talked to the girls and, I think it's a pretty cool experience. I, I think that to me is what probably hits home most is is the they're just like you and I. They want to be just like you and I. And then what I mean by that, not like our work ethic or our build or anything. I'm talking about they just want to be able to smile with the people that love them and want to see them succeed. And then they want to turn it into the success for those kids. And all it takes is one smile. Yeah. Every time, I mean, we had Jordy Ball for that live, and and afterwards, just seeing these kids. I mean, every kid brought a softball. Every kid just won, and not once was it a bat of an eye of oh, and not once was anybody going wonder how much Jordy's making for this one, you know. And it's like, you know, it's all about the kids, the experience for them, and these parents to understand that these kids look up to them, so now they're able to take from them with that with them being in a a smaller group, you know, because you can have Jordy go to any of the big camps and and help out, but does it feel personal? Does it feel like they're getting the time that they want? And I think that's a thing that impacts a camp on whether you you have your kid go or not, because are they just a number or are they a part of something that they get a little bit of, as they say, touch, yeah, you know, and talk, not just, kind all of right, we're in a big, battery, ro- right? big group. Um, so you got that done. I did a, a local, uh, one V one challenge with some ex Huskers. Okay. And, uh, like December's just been so busy for both of us, but just watching these athletes compete against each other. Um, and then being able to share their story and there's just the, even their film, because we had a couple Juco kids who are looking to get up. Like 
it's so impactful the platform that we're continuing to create to where not only are we doing it where people are tagging us if they're in recruiting whether it's baseball football anything that we're sharing basketball but also when i go to a live event and i've been doing the wired access hoops night i mean that's a, a lot of fun it's a lot of work like that's the only bad part and i hope people understand like the film work is a lot of work and i'm grateful for our producer brandon and and i actually met one of his best friends it was really weird because when you go to those things and you kind of know some people, don't you also try to fill out and kind of get other connections and see where it is? And so I'm talking to this guy and he's got a Husker hat on. He's got a Husker shirt hoodie on or sweatshirt. And I'm like, well, he must. And he's like, yeah, I'm just down from Lincoln. So you just graduated soon. And he's like, the scariest part is just moving out. And I'm like, trust me. I know I got four <laughs> kids. And then he, I go, so do you know, like some people, I mean, her dad's pretty good up in, in the UNL game. And, he goes, yeah, I actually, uh, my one of my best friends, he's crazy as heck, is Brandon. I go, Brandon who? He's like, Teed, Tiedemann? I was like, dude, Teeds, I've known Teeds since he was like in eighth grade, ninth grade. I said, he's our producer. So you find those connections, and then that awkwardness just takes out. When you're going to this softball event and you're going to the baseball, what was your biggest thing to be able to break those icebreakers with them? What, what was your connection that you were able to kind of go, all right, I can – was there other ones that were like, this is my first time. I'm a first timer. Yeah. I mean, you always get those people like not knowing, uh, you know, what to expect. I traveled with uh, Tim Sharman from Millard and he coaches us, Scott, and he's never been. Um, and, Ooh. you know, we got in the car. And I'm like, man, like, you're going to be tired. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And I remember uh, he actually stayed with my trainer, Brandon. My Brandon was telling me a story is like he walked in the room and it was like, you know, six or seven o'clock at night. And I mean, you go. I mean, like the the baseball one, there's learning happening from eight thirty in the morning to eleven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Like the last hot stove goes from like eight thirty to eleven. So I mean, if you are you know totally in it and, and doing everything you should be and, and learning, like it's exhausting. But I remember going back to the story is you know he walked in and and Tim looks at Brandon and he says. I am not moving until the morning. <laughs> and Brandon's like, he looked like a mummy, <laughs> like just sitting in the bed. And, you know, it's uh, it's great to make those connections, and you know, it's good to kind of to get away from things and get around a bunch of like-minded people. I mean, it just really motivates you, and like, you know, really shows you how many people are trying to get better um, and help and, other and athletes help get others. better, yeah, right? I mean, you know, because yeah, you know, I tell like, you know, like all my players that like have success you know like ruby is like hey man the the more you know the more you owe right like it's you got to get back um, yes and, and to, you know help teach other people and it's crazy you you walk around the abca it's like man there's like tim corbin like right there like one of the best coaches in the country like just talking to random people and like you know you can just go up to anyone to talk to them ask them questions pick their mind i mean it's, it's where everyone's at, and it's just an, an unreal experience. I, I think the coolest thing for me that I had is is even at this Husker thing, Alonzo Moore back in the in 2017 area, he was there, and we're leaving. He's like, hey, man, I want to give you my number. Let's hook up next time. And I'm like, all right, all right. Like the connections you made by just being direct, honest, and show them that it's nothing but all for these athletes. It's a, it's a strong connection. And when you think of what you did down there for baseball – what what was the biggest thing with your group that you felt together you guys were able to bring in? But also, what do you look for? Are you a subject looker or a coach looker on who's doing the demonstrating and who's talking about it? Because I know with football, that was some of my biggest thing is, who am I going to watch? What was their program success? And what can I learn? Yeah, I mean, I, man, I think it's both, right? I mean, there's, there's definitely coaches that that – I respect, I look up to that. I look and it's like, and you know, if they're talking, I'm going to be there, you know, because I know, um, I probably heard him say it 20 times before, but I know like, you know, listening to them, like reinforcing it. It's like, you know, the, the motivation you get from that, like is fantastic. Right. Then there's, um, obviously there's new concepts, you know, the, the baseball is like a, a changing game and you know, like the new concepts, the new things that we're learning, like, you just have another year of research, another year of research, like another year of results, like what's working, what's not, how to do it. So I think it's it's a little bit of both. I mean, this year was was interesting because it's like you had the whole 
new school versus old school mentality. And, you know, like nothing's been worse recently. That's, that's a good um, subject, man. Really like is, is when do you accept the change as a coach? I mean, if you know what you've worked on, but I mean, look at how many coaches just retired. How many football coaches, head football coaches that were, or got let go. Yeah. When you look across both call it and you're like, when's enough enough or do you change and make a change because that's what's happening around you? Well, it probably depends like where you're at in your career, you know, a little bit. Like I got to assume like Saban's looking at this NIL thing and transfer portal is like, oh my God, like I can now no longer develop my players. You because know? if I do, they're looking for the money somewhere well, else. I mean, not even necessarily looking for the money, but you know, if like I got that guy that I brought in that I knew he's going to be fantastic year three, but on year one, we're a little bit behind. I don't have three years anymore. Yeah. You know, like if, if a, if a guy at Alabama is not playing, you know, freshman, sophomore year, they're not going to stick around. No. I mean, they want to play. These guys have been playing the bit like their entire lives. So, you know, I got to assume that the transfer portal and the craziness, cause you see that in baseball now. Um, I think it's, we're in a really hard time, like with, with sports and everything and coaching and, and it's just different. Cause do you see it? I mean, we've had quite a few baseball players on our show going different routes. Do you feel like it's going to be as consistent of constantly having a move to get better? Or do you think you'll still have some of those diehards? This is where I'm going. This is where I want to be. And I'm going to stay here, even though that money opportunity, because obviously we had the one had, had them where they come to Nebraska, but they knew they had to go to either sec or, or the PAC 12 to get some better ball. I mean, those are just hard decisions in the moment, but now you're talking NIL. You're talking everybody's in the transfer portal. How are you going to match up? Because now are you a number or are you a person? Yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to talk about this a while. I mean, we could go on <laughs> this. So, I mean, it's it, – man, it's, it's tough. So, yeah, as far as, like, transferring, there's just different paths. Usually people took that JUCO path, right, and, like, you know, like, Gained Mid- weight and yeah, got better. Mid- Midwest kids, like we're behind reps. You know, when we look at like a, a guy in Omaha versus a guy in Houston, I mean, like we've literally had half the reps. Yes. Um. So you know, sometimes that's hard to compete with on like a big scale. So junior college, you know, provided that opportunity. Um. And that was a great path for some people, right? Yeah. Um. But now with the transfer portal, I think a junior college is becoming harder and harder to to get to you know junior college division one because a lot of these people are using these mid-major schools now as the their their college. stepping stone yeah you know like i could go to you know like with jared wagner on and and notice him like you know he went to creighton you yeah know, had a great career there um then went to arkansas after mid-major sec yeah, and you see like a lot you see a lot of that more happening and i can go in the transfer portal and see a guy hey this that guy has two or three years of experience in the Pac-12 with numbers um, versus like, hey, this guy was a, a junior college guy that like, I don't know how that's going to translate to Division One. So Because the pitching's not the same, the the who they're going up against. And that's what I really liked about Jared's story was he was like, I want to prove that I can go up against the best. Yeah. And then you go, I mean, you know, no matter what, I know that he was a, a Husker coach, but I never disliked him when he moved. He moved, Anderson moved for the best of himself. And I never, I don't get into the politics of it or all that stuff. He did great things down in Arkansas and you can't be mad at him there, you know, and that's going to go play for Arkansas is just like looking for that ring, but you're not, you're looking just to see, can I compete at a highest level that we feel is possible? I mean, if you can hit in the SEC, I mean, you're, you know, there's probably a bright future ahead for you, right? I mean, that's the the toughest conference, no doubt. And when you look at stuff like that, I mean, we had uh, Kale Fountain on, and, and I'm going to do another episode with him. We got to do a Zoom with him coming up. But he went from ACC, Florida State, coaching stuff changed, fires, retires. Now he's at LSU, and you're like, this is a Nebraska boy going down to LSU, the champion to be a part of it, but not just a part of it, be in the mix. Like that's gotta be something that drives you to know that you don't have to stay put here. You can, you can really push yourself to a limit, but it's a mental limit to get to that. 
Yeah, I mean, it takes a a lot of time and indecisions, right? You know, like I, I don't know if sacrifice is the right word, you know, because everyone makes sacrifices, but yeah. like you like that whole family made a decision and you know to support Kale and, and his journey and um there's a lot of a lot of time and effort and, and resources that go in that to help create a player like that. And you know, like his dad, like I, you know, I was talking to him, like, hey man, like, I guess talking to him a couple weeks ago, I was like, dude, I need to like just go have a drink with you and yes. I need to learn. Like, you know, how did you create this kid? Well, right? and I mean, you got young kids and they're starting to hit. I mean, isn't Gunner 10 almost 10? 10. Yeah. <sighs> He's double digits. So you're like in that prime where you gotta really hone in there but you still have what you have going on at wired and out at elkhorn how what do you think will be your biggest struggle to to kind of intermix that stepping back and not being dad and and being able to let see where he goes or having to really hone in on that dad part um man we're in like just like a, a unique unique world right now right like everything is like the TikTok world, I can swipe up, swipe up. It's so fast. Like the focus isn't there, you know, like it's just, so it's a different, it's like different to like get through these kids heads that like, you know, it requires a lot of, a lot of time and, and decisions and, you know, it, nothing and to be patient, right? Like it's, it's progress is never linear, right? Yeah. Like you need to work on this, like, a lot it takes a lot like you tell me you want to go here then like every decision you need to make like you know it's tough it's like it's, i just can't swipe up <laughs> you can't go to the next new. video so like yeah you know relating to these kids and like you know teaching them the 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 patience and uh the trust like it's it's just a different world we're in it's tough right now do you feel like being the trainer coach that you are when it comes to like your own kids do you feel like they kind of are like, okay, dad, you're, you're always in that mode. Or do you think they're able to sometimes break you down and be able to be all right, dad, let's have this moment. And just, just you and them. Mm, I've really tried to change my approach, like over the year to more of like a holistic, like over the last couple of years, like over to more like a more holistic coach. So like, you know, we're coaching life and baseball is going to take care of itself. So, you know, I try now to kind of be like the same person on and off the field because the, the life lessons don't really change, you know, I mean, you're going to have to learn how to handle failure and mm -hmm. baseball and life, you know, things are going to go wrong. And, you know, I think, uh, there's a quote, I can't remember the coach says like, you know, like my goal in coaching is to empower these kids to make decisions on their own with the information they get, you know, and if you can do that, like you're going to have a successful kid or, you know, young adult. So, uh, I don't know if it's, it's changed too much, you know, I think it's more so now you see like big picture, yeah, and, and the lessons you can gain from from sports and and relate those to life. I, I don't know. It's it's not too much different anymore. Um, I, I think it helps you. Like you can you can accomplish both. See, I was listening to uh, Damon Benning. He was on another podcast um, with some other with uh, um, and he had this message, and he was just talking about his son and one of the stresses, and it really like opened up my eyes. He's like, "Did I do enough for my own kid?" Like even, even myself, like I think some of my reason for what I do is because the voice for my own kids, I didn't want to be that voice because then it's just dad being a voice. That's tough. Um, I know that they're all in the right area after sports. So that, that to me was my biggest picture. So it's even when I'm doing like the videos for these kids, like I'm doing it more of because did I do enough for my own son? Did I do enough for my own kids? I provided the opportunities. Their work ethic is just like dads. They got that. But did they understand the sports part of the effort or what they would have to put into it beyond? Because you can't just force them. If you're trying to force them, they're not going to want to do it. They're not going to be that guy. So it really hit home when, when, when Damon said that, you know, just – did I do enough for my own son? And and I mean, I couldn't even imagine having the legacy part to go along with it, yeah. you know, let alone just to be a player, you know, did I do enough for him? I could talk about everybody else, but I don't talk about my own son. You yeah. Know? Well, and a lot of times, you know, if, if in the kids or anything like me, when I was a kid, you know, like I kind of want to do the opposite of what my parents told me, 
<laughs> exactly. You know, like when it comes down to it, it's like, you should be doing X, Y, and Z. Okay, I'm going to do ABC. <laughs> right? Like, so I think that's hard, hard. But, you know, I guess, I like, yeah, I understand that. I think back to like how I was as a kid. And, um, you know, we're, we're blessed to have a lot of really good players at the facilities. So, you know, when we're training these kids, like we always talk, like, dude, like your big brother to all these younger kids. Yes. At the like, you know, Gunner, Gunner will listen to you. He won't always listen to me. <laughs> so I definitely, uh, you know, trades like probably Trey Fromm's probably the best with it. I'm like, hey, man, like, I need you to tell Gunner this. That's because Trey acts you know? like he's like 12 <laughs> as well. I yeah. love him, dude. I love his energy when he's there. And we're hopefully going to get him on as well because his journey to Nebraska is. Pitcher started today. Oh, so man. I was talking to him and, you know, he's healthy. It's, I saw I threw a bullpen with him on January 1st. He's sitting 92, 95 and, and throwing strikes. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping and. Oh, let's go. So, you know, as we get through everything and, and I think of like, even with my own kids, the first moment, like that, my kids, Courtney, she just did it with Lindsay. Cause she's her barista at the scooters that my daughter works at. And she goes, she pulled up and this was even before we dropped the episode that we were going to do it. And she pulls up and she goes, Hey, uh, cause they were waiting for time and the baristas have to try to, bring up some conversation oh yeah and so she goes um you know that podcast thing you're doing that's my dad and like that that really hit because i don't have my kids do no advertisement they're not yeah the ones that i go hey could you set up an interview <laughs> with so and so because you know them like it's all our own legwork and i don't go through them but it really hit hard when she was able to say that. And Lindsay, Lindsay at first was kind of taken off because she's like, we haven't even announced it yet. Yeah. But then Lindsay seeing the smile on, on like even my own daughter's face, it just really hit home of going, there is some good coming out of it, going back to my kids now that they're older, but it's more of just, they look up to these athletes, you know, even if they're not playing at a high level or they're not, at that same level, they look up to him as mentors. And, and when you were talking about Trey, it just really hones into is an athlete going to always be able to put on that face when it comes to it? You obviously deal with a lot of different athletes when it comes to training and helping. Have you ever had where you had to kind of maybe step back, look at one of the trainers and be like, okay, we've got to change the atmosphere to make it where these kids really want to be around you when it comes to the athletes all the time you know it's um yeah you get you get a couple different type of people in the facility you get people that are in in it right and then you get people that are like into it right yeah and um you're gonna get drastic different results but you know i mean that's like that's our job it's like how do we get people like into it how do we like let them know that there is a path at the, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what we're working on right now is like, okay, like we need to take like a more holistic approach with our training and development, right? Like let's, let's have these goals these kids like learn how to write down goals, set goals and create a path to, to do it. It's not about just showing up at six o'clock on a Tuesday and throwing a bullpen. I mean, this is like a way of life. If, if this is really what you want to do, it's different. So that's our, our goal that we've been working on. We spent a ton of time talking at the ABCA, like about my kind of game planning for the year. So um, I'm going to be honest. This is the first year in I'm 40, almost 42. First time that I could remember writing goals down, writing it pen to paper. Well, more of on the notes on the phone, but yeah, actually writing it down. And, and I have a group of guys and, and I kind of actually held them a little bit more too. I was like, give me a goal that you really want to work on that I could help you because people don't understand the more you talk about what your goals are, or what you're trying to accomplish, the more it makes one other people want to be a part of it or two, they look at themselves. And like, I never, like when people talk about influencers and people talk about that, you don't realize that if that's not your goal, like my goal is not to be an influencer on my weight loss. Right. But then when you notice people around you, either or on and when they are they'll tell you about it they'll be like kendall did you see i did and i'm like let's go let's go and then when they're off you could just tell by some of the eating habits that they go back to because i'm the same i'm it's it's a ritual you gain it you lose it you gain it you lose cycle, it cycle yeah finding that comfortability i think 
is writing that goal? What's your style when it comes to goals and how do you approach and have you written your own goals? Um, yeah, I'm actually going through that, that exercise right now. And, and this is stuff that like I've learned over the last year, I've been spending time. And so, um, like right now I'm going through an MVP process. Okay. Mission, vision, principles. Right. So like, you know, what's my mission? What do I want? Like on my tombstone, right? Like vision, like, you know, like this is like what it's going to take and, and principles process. Like here's how I'm going to get there. So, uh, going through that and then, you know, so I heard a quote recently is like, you know, if you try to go about things like without goals, like there is no target, like you would never go play golf with no holes. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you don't have goals, like set down and, and written down, understand what you're trying to accomplish. You're just, you're shooting, you know, to, to no goals. So that's what we're going through now. And that's what I want to bring to our facility. And, and you know, I, I like these kids. And I like the MVP status too, or the, just being able to put those words in the paper because you're taking someone, some, some acknowledgement that everybody hears MVP and they just think this master's thing, someone great, someone doing something, but you're just doing it for yourself to to hold that account accountability and when you look at it amongst your team do you gonna have a team let's just say your team goal your coaches staff's team goal and then individuals that you want from them as well is that kind of like the style that you think will be successful to where they understand that okay now if uh if gunner's my teammate and he says he wants this and he doesn't get it as a teammate, I need to go to him and go, come on, man, you got this. To yeah. help kind of cross promote the 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 team to really push each other to be who they want to be. Yeah, you know, you, you can certainly have team goals. And I, I think that's part of it. I think, you know, we should all be working towards towards a common thing. But, you know, a lot of the team goals, like if you get too focused on that, like, you know, you can't you can't always like control your team's like results yeah right like so like you know if you can work like more of an individual level i think okay. they contribute and like accomplish like what the team wants to accomplish but you know if like hey man like we want to win the state tournament you know like that's that's hard you can't always control that you know but what can you control is like you can control your preparation you can control your effort on every single pitch and a lot of that you know will turn into success when you set a goal i like what you said there the state championship that's everybody's goal how do you make it different how do you make it something that they realize what it is and not just we know that's everybody's goal we know it's what you're really playing for yeah i mean that's like a telescope goal right like <laughs> yeah. so i mean that's yes. like that's like way out there give me, um, give me that and if we you know we just started practice right now and if we go into you know our first practice and be like hey man our goal is to win the state tournament like great but I don't know if that's going to, you know, we use that goal right now. If that's going to help us actually win the state tournament, um, we could probably break those down and in, in a little bit, like, you know, let's, let's learn some processes. Let's learn some, you know, fundamentals. Let's like focus on our control and our effort, every single pitch, um, you know, and if we can compete like on a pitch by pitch basis, that's going to take care of that telescope goal. Um, but sometimes, you know, you just put the, a big pie in the sky and that's that's pretty far out there that you know if that's the goal like you need to like okay let's come back and like what are we going to do this next practice what's important now yeah um, one to get to that that point well look at how many people are promoting the one cent one percent better right every practice every game they're just trying to get one percent better when you look at the ages that you've obviously grown through with gunner what do you think is the biggest thing that you have to change every year to make the kids want to be a part of it and for the growth of the team. Yeah. I think, Is it different every year? Um, I don't know if it's different, but I think these kids are like at a crucial point in their life where um, they got to start like learning how to take feedback um, and like create a development plan to get better with that. You know, we don't always do that or like the schools just do it for us. Um, you know, there's like a, a lot of these kids have like a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, I'm not good at this. Like, so I'm not going to do it where you have a growth mindset. I'm not good at this yet, but I know if I work on X, Y, and Z, I'm going to get better, you know? So like a lot of kids will just shy away from things. So it's, I think it's important to like let kids know and, and praise effort, you know, and create that, that growth mindset. Like, Hey, here's where I'm at right now. But I know if I do this, 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 this is where I will be versus, 
you know, a kid with a fixed mindset, if they're not good at baseball, are they going to want to play more baseball? I <sighs> probably not. The only, the only experience right for not. mine, it was it was just they f- they felt the politics, and when they felt that, yeah. that's what killed their game. Yeah. And it sucks because the last interview was a guy that didn't let the the politics kill him. Yeah, he knew he wasn't playing, and he just kept working. The growth mindset versus yes, fixed mindset, right? Yes. So, and it's he, like, I mean, you know how you fix politics? Like you just get really good. <laughs> You, you're you're right. You're right. You just you gotta outplay. You gotta out hustle, and you gotta you gotta work hard to get there. Biggest thing that you took from this last uh, baseball get together that you had that you brought up back, and uh, that you feel you can really implement. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I guess we've kind of been talking about it a little bit. There's a couple things. I mean, one's gonna be like the mental game. That's my goal for this next year. What I've been spending a lot of time on recently is like. You know, how do we coach that? How do we implement that? Because I think that's the the biggest thing holding people back. Um, so I want to like you know include that in our process. We talked about like setting goals and how to get there and, and everything. So there is a, just a ton of people talking about that um, at the events and how they're helping people. So that's big. Um, there's a lot of technology in baseball right now, and the investment they're making in technology. Like, I mean. You're not you're not running around like you know exactly what type of player you are and and where you're at like I mean we can know everything about you you know and the player and how to get better so I think you know that as well as like do better assessments create a plan for these people and and show them what hey this is what a Division One play, baseball player looks like this is where you're at right now and how we're gonna how are you gonna to obtain there. to that I got gotcha. you so, that's that's a big piece and the, I mean it was really interesting this year too because like. We talked a little bit earlier, the old school versus new school. There's a lot of people are like stuck in this negative mindset where like change is bad. Um, and you know, these people are doing it the new, they're dumb, they're bad people. Like so there's like a lot of toxicity. Like I watched like a couple talks and I felt like you know, the sitting coach went on stage and just like ranted for an hour. I learned nothing, but I just heard him come like complain about how like people are teaching hitting now. You know, I was like, I mean, that's just you just ranted for an hour. You and I, I think it, it makes it even worse for yourself is when you've seen success from the things that you've taught. Um, but it's just getting all that information out to people. And uh, we'll see what the new age brings. I mean, it's obviously doing good things. You're getting players to the next level. You're getting them to where they want to be, not just who they want to be. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Home runs were good 20 years ago. And they're still good. They're still good right? so. <laughs> well, once again, this is a Wired Access podcast. Heard at production. Uh, Brian Southworth and myself. We have a live show next week. Lindsey Krause over at Heard at Sports on Wednesday. Come check it out. Um, and also make sure to check out that Pro Time Nebraska. The Omaha Supernovas hit the court for the first ever Pro Volleyball Federation match January 24th against Atlanta Vibe CHI, 7 p.m. Go check them out at supernovas.com, and we'll see you next time.